is welcome to lecture series on advanced geotechnical engineering and we are discussing module 4 shear strength of soils so in the previous lecture we introduced ourselves to methods for determining shear strength of the soils in the laboratory and then we said that you know we have discussed about the direct shear test and what are the you know the stress states in direct shear test and merits and demerits of the direct shear test then we said that you know the other uh, uh, type of uh, very popular testing which is a triaxial compression test and which is the physical model test which actually simulates the, uh, the stress conditions and the drainage conditions as in the soil and it actually has got versatile applications. So in this particular uh, module uh, 4 and lecture 8 we are going to discuss about uh, you know the, uh, the different types of triaxial tests and uh, pertinent uh, stress paths. So this is the module 4 in the lecture 8 on the stress strain relationship and the shear strength of soils and uh, we are as uh, informed uh, we are going to concentrate on the triaxial behavior particularly with reference to uh, you know unconsolidated uh, uh, unconfined uh, unconsolidated undrained test, unconfined compression test, consolidated and undrained and consolidated drain uh, triaxial test and uh, the stress paths for the you know uh, in the triaxial uh, tests. So this as uh, said most widely used shear strength test and is suitable for all types of soil and uh, a cylindrical specimen generally having L by D is equal to 2 because this is required uh, to, uh, to maintain uh, you know the principal planes to uh, you know remain plane remain as principal planes during all stages of the triaxial test. Suppose the failure plane uh, you know passes uh, through the uh, upper and bottom uh, portions then you know there can be possibility of the shear, shear stress is generated and that uh, in such situations those planes cannot be called as uh, you know the principal planes. So uh, in uh, triaxial test we have this, uh, this radial plane which is vertical plane as well as these horizontal planes. They, these planes actually remain as principal planes throughout the test and the typical uh, specimen diameters has been mentioned 38 mm, 100 mm widely used otherwise we also have uh, possibilities of 300 mm diameter and uh, you know even uh, the larger uh, sizes uh, triaxial tests are actually becoming in vogue now. So in order to simulate the uh, you know the uh, confining stresses it is actually done through uh, you know by filling the chamber with water and the water is actually pressurized by all round pressure and which is actually called as you know the chamber pressure or cell pressure. So this is the typical triaxial cell which is actually shown and the sample which is having L by D is equal to 2 that is 38 mm diameter or 100 mm diameter and 200 mm height or 75 mm diameter and 150 mm height is actually placed and in order to uh, you know prevent uh, you know the you know interaction of some sample with the water there is a membrane which is actually placed uh, which is placed and uh, so that that membrane ensures that water tightness and uh, there are different ports will be there uh, one one port is to uh, you know the supply water into the uh, soil sample and one one port is to uh, you know supply uh, to to take the to measure the volume changes and another port is to measure any changes in the pressure within the sample and uh, the loading is actually applied from the top uh, uh, that is actually called as deviator load. So when we have the sample which is uh, you know confined with uh, all round pressures uh, then uh, you know the pressures all round for the samples are sigma 3 and then when uh, in order to you know induce the loading uh, let us example that we uh, consider an example that we have got uh, a soil strata and uh, we have got a sample at a certain depth uh, let us say about 5 meters depth. And above that suppose we are constructing a foundation and the building loading is actually increasing gradually. So that is actually increase in the incremental load is actually give, uh, you know applied by this uh, uh, you know this York uh, and uh, this loading arm and this loading arm induces that uh, sigma 1. So sigma 1 is equal to sigma 3 plus P by A. So sigma 1 minus sigma 3 is actually called as the, the deviated load. So in the mechanism basically is that intermediate principal stress sigma 2 must be equal to major sigma 1 or minor sigma 3 stress so as to facilitate representation of the stress state in two dimensional Mohr circle 
and the cylindrical specimen is placed inside the perspex cell filled with water so that that acrylic uh, uh, you know cell uh, will be filled with water the specimen is covered with a latex sheet so as to avoid the direct contact with water and the specimen is initially loaded by the cell pressure uh, and then uh, basically during that uh, stage if the consolidation has to happen then the consolidation uh, will be allowed and then thereafter once the consolidation is completed a deviator stress is then applied gradually on the sample with the help of ram actually a duct the, at the bottom of the sample allows the water to pass through the sample which is further monitored and and uh, which, which actually uh, can have a volume increase or uh, you know which uh, can actually measure the volume changes and uh, the pore water pressure transducer actually measures uh, positive or negative pore water pressures depending upon the stress history of the soil being tested. So fine grained soil can stand uh, the mould without any support but uh, the coarse grained soil samples have to be kept in uh, some supporting uh, mould until the application of negative pore water pressure to the sample through, uh, through the drainage duct. So, uh, so the fine grained soil samples are actually prepared. Uh, you know on the uh, uh, without any fine grade soil can, can actually support but you know coarse grain soils or sandy soil samples have to be kept with uh, some suction and because of that uh, you know then afterwards uh, the suction is actually released gradually. If the cell pressure is increased to say sigma Cp then the isotropic uh, pressure is taken entirely by the pore water and the pore water uh, you know the pressure increases but no change occurs in the effective stress because uh, if there is no volume change then the pore water pressure will uh, you know no change in the volume uh, no change in the effective stress. Now we have uh, different uh, drainage conditions like uh, as has been mentioned that actually makes uh, you know uh, the combinations in uh, triaxial test or different types of triaxial test. Uh, one is that you know we have two steps one uh, step one is that you know during that uh, consolidation of the sample and uh, and then shearing stage the, so in the in this basically the two stages are there uh, you know uh, stage one uh, where the consolidation can happen and the stage two is the shearing can happen under all all round pressures uh, sigma c drainage valve condition uh, will be open if you are having if you are allowing uh, consolidation so the sample uh, the water in the sample drains out. Once the consolidation is actually completed then uh, you know it is actually uh, the shear loading in this also the shear loading actually it actually has got uh, the drainage valve condition can be open and closed. Uh, it can be open if you are having a consolidated drained uh, uh, triaxial uh, test and it can be closed if you are having a, uh, thing, uh, thinking of consolidated undrained uh, triaxial test and uh, it can be closed in both consolidation and uh, you know uh, drainage uh, shearing stages and that is actually unconsolidated undrained uh, uh, triaxial test. So unconsolidated undrained triaxial test is basically a quick test where the sample is uh, as prepared will be tested without any consolidation by applying three different uh, cell pressures and if the cell pressure is actually is uh, if the if the sample is actually saturated and the, the even at different uh, cell pressures uh, the, the deviatric load uh, you know will be same. So with that what will happen is that we get the undrained shear strength of a soil and the failure uh, uh, you know failure uh, plane failure plane uh, or the failure uh, analogue will be horizontal. So uh, we have certain practical considerations in which uh, we will be actually doing this uh, uh, consolidated drained and consolidated undrained and unconsolidated undrained uh, triaxial test. Uh, for example, for unconsolidated undrained uh, triaxial test, where actually we are when you are constructing uh, you know uh, an embankment uh, on the soft soil without any uh, you know uh, waiting uh, uh, period. That means that we don't allow the consolidation to take place and you don't allow the uh, even uh, the consolidation during the shear. Then you know a rapid construction. Uh, on uh, a particular soil deposit on as let us say a soft clay deposit actually uh, simulates uh, the unconsolidated undrained uh, condition or uh, you know let us say the rapid loading of a founding uh, on a foundation on a uh, unsaturated uh, on a saturated undrained clay is uh, also an indication of uh, uh, you know the uh, you know the example of unconsolidated undrained test or uh, let us assume that uh, a catastrophic uh, 
you know failure of a uh, in a in a vertical cut under uh, uh, saturated of a saturated soil under undrained condition is also uh, to some extent indicates an example of uh, unconsolidated undrained test in such uh, situations one need to you know do the unconsolidated undrained uh, triaxial test but we have some practical examples in which uh, we can actually say that uh, uh, you know the different uh, types of uh, you know tests can be done uh, depending upon the practical situation the one what we have here is uh, some examples for the CD analysis for clays. Uh, this is after uh, Holzen Coax 1981, and uh, consider an embankment constructed uh, very slowly in the sense that embankment uh, constructed in stages, and each stage uh, the consolidation has been uh, uh, you know has been uh, allowed, and uh, between each stage there is an adequate uh, waiting period. Then embankment was actually constructed uh, very very slowly in stages or a soft clay deposit. So um, this example in the suppose if you are having a situation like embankment construction uh, you know uh, were very slowly in stages for a soft clay deposit then you know one uh, has to do uh, the consolidated drained uh, triaxial test and this also indicates they are also called the drained parameters and where uh, the pore water pressure uh, dissipation actually completely occurs. So with that uh, what we can we call is that these effective Sheerston parameters like effective cohesion and effective friction angle uh, can be obtained and uh, these are actually also indicate uh, for example when we are doing a slope stability analysis particularly under effective stress conditions uh, we have to use for the long term stability of a, a particular uh, you know slope or embankment uh, we have to use the uh, we need the effective Sheerston parameters like C dash and phi dash. Uh, we are actually discussing about the example for uh, you know uh, some field examples for the you know where we actually adopt the consolidated drained uh, uh, triaxial test parameters. And the other example what we are discussing in this uh, for the CD uh, test particularly where we can actually get the drained parameters is the earth dam with steady state seepage conditions wherein uh, we actually have uh, an uh, earthen embankment uh, or earthen dam constructed with a core and a casing. The casing is actually having uh, you know material which is uh, medium uh, the low uh, having low plasticity materials fine grain soil but with the low plasticity materials and uh, this is the upstream water level and this is the preatic surface and uh, the water uh, flows and then uh, if through a drain it actually vents out. Now this is the failure surface uh, typical failure surface. So uh, under steady state CPS conditions under long term uh, conditions and uh, you know then uh, when we wanted to evaluate the uh, the stability of an, an earthen dam subjected to steady state CPS conditions one uh, need to adopt uh, the effective Sheerston parameters that is uh, C dash and phi dash especially obtained from uh, by allowing the consolidation uh, that is uh, cons the, cons the consolidation uh, drainage during the consolidation as well as uh, you know during shear shearing stages. So both the stages actually happen very very slow. So in a way uh, they give uh, you know the bo in both the stages uh, what will actually happen is that um, the particularly in the drainage uh, stage the dissipation of pore water pressure is almost close to 0 uh, because uh, you know the raise of the pore water pressure will not be there at all because the drainage is actually happening continuously. The another uh, set of examples like for example similar uh, situation we are having an embankment on soft clay. Uh, but uh, what we have done is that uh, you know embankment uh, is constructed uh, after uh, you know uh, waiting for a period of uh, you, you know for consolidation for one that is stage one and the stage two was embankment is raised subsequent to consolidation of a soil under the uh, stage one loading of an embankment. So in this case what actually happened is that you actually allowed the consolidation uh, to happen and during that that stage actually drainage is allowed then volume changes in the soil were actually recorded but when stage 2 happened uh, and uh, the no drainage actually happened uh, all of a sudden there is a you know the failure which actually uh, could, have, could have risen. So this actually situation uh, uh, you know uh, arise and this for this uh, type of situation that you know we can actually say that consolidated undrained uh, parameters are uh, very useful. And uh, the other uh, example like uh, the earthen dam example when you take we have a core and we have uh, the casing 
and this is the water level 1 and water level 2 assume that uh, the water level 1 to 2 1 to 2 uh, drops uh, you know uh, suddenly that is called rapid drawdown case and in this case rapid round rapid drawdown occurs behind an earthen dam and no drainage of the core when it is take place that is the during steady state seepage conditions the consolidation and all these things has actually happened the, the shear tau f is nothing but the shear strength under steady state seepage conditions prior to the drawdown but what has actually happened is that the drawdown is so sudden uh, there is no drainage actually during the uh, you know the uh, period of the drawdown. So in such situations uh, the shearing actually happens uh, you know under undrained conditions. So this is uh, an example for uh, uh, consolidated uh, you know undrained uh, triaxial test parameters. So here when you have this uh, consolidated undrained case uh, then in such situations what we can use that we use these uh, uh, you know uh, uh, depending upon the typical situations we actually select the type of the test and then we use these parameters uh, for conducting uh, the different uh, special cases of the uh, you know the triaxial test. So uh, we have uh, you know uh, in principle uh, uh, consolidated undrained unconsolidated uh, undrained and uh, consolidated drained triaxial test and there is a special case of uh, you know a triaxial test where unconfined compression test what we call and which is uh, you know which is uh, you know without any cell pressure the sample is actually taken to failure. So the specimen is actually taken to failure with no uh, confinement that is unconfined uh, compressive, compressive strength test and unconsolidated undrained test is actually specimen is taken to failure with no drainage permitted neither in uh, consolidation time nor in uh, uh, you know shearing stages and uh, consolidated undrained uh, test actually here. Uh, the drainage is actually initially open to allow the consolidation to take place and so that the pore water pressure dissipates to 0 and then it is closed so that uh, the failure can actually happen without uh, uh, any drainage that is the condition where the shearing stage uh, you know the drainage will be closed. So uh, then third uh, type of uh, test is that the consolidated drained uh, triaxial test the drainage valve is initially open to allow the pore water pressure to dissipate to the 0. So that is as usual in the previous uh, stage previous type of test consolidated and drained test the sample is allowed to consolidate and uh, the pore water pressure is uh, you know uh, UI is uh, allowed to dissipate to 0 and is kept open uh, while the specimen is actually taken to the uh, failure at a sufficiently slow rate. So the, the strain rate at which the samples are actually uh, you know uh, tested for example unconfined compression test and unconsolidated and drain test they are actually tested at 1.25 mm per minute and uh, the, this is the you know the standard rate uh, you know the strain rate at which the sample this particular 1.25 mm per minute is actually selected uh, keep in view that you know uh, the pore water no volume changes actually take place and the pore water pressure dissipation also will not actually take place particularly in an unconfined compressive strength test actually where because it is not actually having uh, you know exposure uh, uh, this application of cell pressure the sample is actually not allowed to undergo uh, the changes due to ch in the temperatures. So uh, we have uh, you know uh, in case of consolidated drained and consolidated undrained uh, triaxial test the strain rates are actually calculated uh, based on uh, the permeability of the soil. Suppose if we are having uh, a uh, marine clay with uh, clay of high compressibility let us say CH then in such situations what will happen is that the permeability of the soil is so low the even the uh, test is actually conducted at very very slow rate. Suppose if you are having a silty type of soil the stress the stress is the test is actually conducted this uh, the rate strain rate is selected uh, as the permeability of the uh, you know silty soil is actually more than clay soil. So the test can actually can be done at a slightly rapid rate compared to uh, you know the, the rate at which actually it was done for a clay. So uh, this particular uh, uh, you know the stresses and strains in a sample in the triaxial compression test basically it is an axisymmetric uh, condition where uh, sigma 2 dash is equal to sigma 3 dash or sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3 and epsilon 2 is equal to epsilon 3 epsilon 2 and 3 are nothing but epsilon 2 in the intermediate uh, uh, in intermediate uh, direction that is uh, intermediate principal stress direction uh, and uh, so in 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 case of triaxial test because of the cylindrical nature of the sample sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3 and epsilon 2 is equal to epsilon 3 so by using uh, p dash is equal to sigma 1 dash plus 2 sigma 3 uh, dash by 3 so that is nothing but uh, 
uh, sigma 3 dash because uh, sigma 1 plus sigma 1 dash plus sigma 2 dash sigma 2 plus sigma 3. So because sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3 we have, what we have done is that p, we have written p dash as uh, sigma 1 dash plus 2 sigma 3 dash by 3. In case of total stress it is p is equal to sigma 1 plus 2 sigma 3 by 3 because p dash is equal to p minus u q that is sigma 1 minus sigma 3 q dash is equal to q because sigma 1 dash minus sigma 3 dash is equal to sigma 1 minus delta u minus uh, of sigma 3 minus delta u. So because of that uh, sigma 1 minus sigma 3 is equal to q is equal to q dash. So thus q dash is equal to q shear is actually unaffected by the pore water pressure. So here when you are actually having a sample uh, which is uh, uh, confined with uh, you know with the membrane and then uh, a cell pressure sigma 3 and the axial total stress is uh, sigma 1 is equal to sigma 3 plus p by a sigma 3 will be acting in all directions sigma 3 will be acting in all directions and uh, sigma 1 is actually applied. So sigma 1 is equal to sigma 3 plus p by a so the deviated stress is nothing but sigma 1 minus sigma 3 is equal to p by a that is so it is also called as sigma 1 minus sigma 3 is equal to sigma d by p b by a and uh, the axial strain in the uh, you know major uh, uh, principal stress direction uh, that is uh, epsilon 1 is equal to delta z by h0 h0 is the original height of the sample and uh, delta z is the vertical uh, compression of the sample or vertical uh, vertical strain actually experienced by the sample so epsilon is equal to epsilon 1 is equal to delta z by h0 and radial strain that is the bulging if it actually happens for example for a loose sand or uh, for a a normally consolidated soil then there is epsilon r is equal to delta r by r0 delta r is the change in the uh, you know radius of the sample to the original radius of the sample and the deviated strain is actually given by epsilon d is equal to 2 third of epsilon 1 minus epsilon 3 and volumetric strain is nothing but epsilon v is equal to epsilon 1 plus 2 epsilon 3. So uh, with uh, uh, p dash is equal to sigma 1 plus 2 sigma 3 dash by 3 and p is equal to to sigma 1 plus 2 sigma 3 by 3 and q dash is equal to q is equal to sigma 1 minus minus sigma 3 we will use these deliberations for plotting the stress paths for the different types of triaxial tests. So as we have discussed the you know the types of triaxial test and we said that consolidated and drained triaxial test that is a CD test which is a very slow test and the if you look into the different uh, stress states in the during the sample testing in the step one is that at the end of uh, consolidation uh, what will happen is that the sample is allowed to consolidate during uh, uh, by allowing the uh, valve to open. So the pore water pressure dissipation will be 0 so then we actually have sigma v dash is equal to uh, uh, sigma v dash is equal to sigma v and sigma h dash sigma dash h c is equal to sigma h c and during actual stress increase that uh, with the sigma v and then delta sigma increase and uh, here as we are not allowing the uh, pore water pressure the, the, the stress state the shearing is actually done at a such a slow rate that the pore water pressure dissipation will be uh, more or less close to 0. In that situation then we have got sigma v dash is equal to sigma v plus delta sigma is equal to sigma 1 dash so sigma dash h is equal to sigma dash h is equal to sigma 3 dash at failure then these things uh, turn out to be that is delta sigma uh, turn out to be delta sigma f then uh, the sigma h c remains constant and uh, the pore water pressure again still remains constant at failure then sigma dash v f is equal to sigma v plus delta sigma f is equal to sigma dash uh, uh, you know 1 sigma 1 f that is the failure and sigma dash h, h uh, f is equal to sigma dash h is equal to sigma dash 3 f. So this is the, uh, the principal stress uh, in the uh, in radial direction uh, at failure and sigma 1 dash up is the principal test in the direction in the uh, major principal stress direction. So sigma 1 is equal to sigma v, v c plus uh, delta sigma and sigma 3 is equal to uh, sigma h c the deviator stress or deviator uh, uh, is given by q or del delta sigma d is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3. So during the consolidation uh, uh, consolidate, consolidated drained uh, triaxial test or if you are if we are having a CU test the volume change actually takes place. So this particular uh, you know volume change of the sample during the consolidation so till the consolidation is completed the you know the sample is actually allowed to consolidate 
and thereafter once this uh, consolidation is completed once the consolidation stage is completed uh, typically for a uh, for a uh, you know clay uh, it may last for about uh, more than uh, 4 to 5 days or ab sometimes about a week uh, for completion of uh, consolidation and in this particular slide uh, the stress strain relationship uh, during uh, uh, shearing is actually given and uh, this is uh, for a case of uh, uh, you know uh, for the case of consolidated undrained uh, triaxial test uh, wherein uh, here we have what we have done is that we actually have uh, uh, you know uh, not allowed the uh, drainage to take place during the shear and uh, uh, then you know what you can actually happen is that uh, we have a situation uh, that uh, uh, here, here uh, the, uh, the 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 deviator stress actually variation is like this and then there is a decrease and uh, decrease actually takes place so this is for the valid for dense sand and uh, oc clay and this is for the loose sand or normally concerned clay you can see that uh, dense sand and uh, uh, oc clay there is a hardening takes place and after attaining a peak a distinct peak is actually uh, after exhibiting the distinct peak there is a uh, you know uh, a uh, softening actually takes place so uh, so here uh, in this case uh, what will actually happen is that uh, uh, you know uh, here the, this is actually for cd test that is for consolidated drain test and uh, wherein actually here the sample uh, if you can see that loose sand are normally consolidated clay there is uh, a compression actually takes place but in case of dense sand and over consolidated clay initially there will be some compression thereafter uh, there is an increase in volume uh, that is volume actually increases so this is actually because you know we have discussed earlier the dilatancy behavior of the soil so in case of triaxial test also particularly when you are actually allowing the uh, sample uh, uh, volume to change during the shearing um, by allowing the drainage to happen that is in the case of consolidated drain test so what will happen is that you actually have got uh, you know the volume changes actually takes place uh, yeah, you know in, in the way which is actually shown but during all stages the pore water pressure remains to be same the pore water pressure remains to be same and uh, the CD test when you actually have done uh, say at, uh, if you wanted to see how actually we can determine a different uh, uh, the uh, parameters the shear strength parameters so one what one need to do is that we have to do uh, let us say minimum uh, three samples or four samples and each sample is actually tested for uh, different uh, cell pressures or different confining stresses so confining stress uh, 1 that is sigma 3a and confining stress b say sigma 3b and confining stress uh, uh, c is sigma 3c then you know we actually have got uh, different types of uh, you know the stress uh, deviator stress versus axial strain uh, curves so once you know the maximum uh, or peak values and for those peak values uh, that is this is nothing but uh, the delta sigma d so we can actually uh, with that as this as diameter one if you draw the more circle you actually can draw different more circles and depending upon uh, let us say that if it is uh, uh, you know normally consolidated soil and uh, uh, which are loose sand then actually we have a situation like uh, you know c dash is equal to 0 the it passes through the origin and tau sigma envelope will be like this with where pi is equal to pi dash here uh, which is uh, you know the incl angle of inclination of the Mohr coulomb failure envelope see the when this hypo when this actually in interacts with this thing so this is the failure um, failure plane which is uh, nothing but 45 plus 5 by 2 inclination which actually happens and uh, this is the angle of inclination of the failure so this is the typical so you need to have these uh, you know the parameters basically to determine different types of sets of uh, more circles can be drawn with the different uh, cell pressures and different deviated loads and uh, so in case of uh, uh, you know different consolidated drain tests as the cell pressure is increased the more circle diameter keeps on increasing or deviator load keeps on increasing so the strength parameters uh, c and phi obtained from cd test since u is equal to 0 in consolidated drain triaxial test sigma is equal to sigma dash and uh, therefore uh, you know the c is equal to c dash and phi is equal to phi dash and what we call uh, these are uh, cd uh, uh, and pi d 
there is nothing but drained cohesion and drained uh, angle of internal friction which is called and these parameters uh, basically represent the long term conditions in a soil where consolidation is actually allowed and then drainage actually taking place during the application of the loading uh, period. So in such situations uh, the, the consolidated drain test the parameters are actually uh, are uh, vital. Uh, for strictly speaking for example uh, if you are having a normally consolidated clay if that is actually identified as normally consolidated clay and uh, as CD is equal to 0 and most circle is actually passing through the horizon uh, the, the, the failure envelope actually passing through the horizon therefore one CD test would be sufficient to determine uh, the pi d, of, pi d of the sand or loose sand or normally consolidated clay. So one CD test would be sufficient. Uh, to determine uh, the pi d the drain friction angle of a loose sand or normally uh, consolidated clay. Uh, for more consolidated clays for the soils which are actually have been subjected to certain uh, pre consolidation pressure uh, the C d of a more consolidated soil is not equal to 0 or when you are actually having uh, you know a uh, you know very dense sand or dense, dense sand deposits and where in that case also uh, the CD may uh, not equal to 0. So war consolidated clay and normally consolidated clay when we look into this here initially up to pre consolidation pressure uh, the envelope actually the more uh, column failure envelope runs like this that beyond that it actually changes into the normally consolidated uh, 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 this is valid like uh, it joins with the normally consolidated uh, failure envelope. So the point of uh, transition where it actually changes again uh, the behavior is actually like the uh, pre consolidation pressure that is sigma c and uh, wherein uh, up to uh, up to that uh, pre consolidation pressure stage uh, the sample actually exhibits uh, you know a drained cohesion and then uh, you know thereafter once uh, see it tosses sigma c and there is uh, a possibility that you know it actually merges with the uh, normally consolidated more coulomb failure and all of now let us discuss about the stress paths uh, during the CD test. So what we have drawn is that uh, you know we, we said that there are two stages. So we have actually represented here uh, Q sigma 1 minus sigma 3 and P is equal to sigma 1 plus 2 sigma 3 by 3 or P is equal to sigma 1 P dash is equal to sigma 1 dash plus 2 sigma 3 dash by 3 because P and P dash are indicated here. So during the initial uh, stage that is consolidation phase. Uh, you know what it has been indicated that the stress path actually follows from here to here and thereafter it is subjected to shear so this is during the this is during the shearing stage so the shearing stage actually starts from here and uh, this inclination of this is actually indicated as 3 to 1 3 vertical 1 horizontal so if you look into this here uh, this delta sigma 1 is equal to delta sigma 1 dash because no uh, no load is actually applied and delta sigma 3 is equal to delta sigma 3 dash so delta sigma 3 is equal to delta sigma 1 dash and delta u is equal to 0. Uh, so the consolidation phase actually is indicated here. So delta sigma 1 is equal to delta sigma 1 dash is equal to delta sigma 3 is equal to delta sigma 3 dash and delta sigma 1 greater than 0 delta u is 0 at the end of consolidation. So during the consolidation once it is self pressure is applied the pore water pressure increases to the excess pore water pressure and then you know it dissipates. So that is at the end of the consolidation the delta u is equal to 0. Uh, with that what actually happen is that delta p dash is equal to uh, delta p is equal to delta sigma 1 plus uh, uh, 2 delta sigma 1 by uh, 3. So we, if that it gets simplified to delta p is equal to delta sigma 1 and delta q is equal to delta sigma 1 minus delta sigma 3 as uh, delta sigma 1 is equal to delta sigma 3 delta q is equal to 0. So delta q by delta p dash is equal to delta q by delta p is equal to 0. So because the slope of this is actually 0 it actually passes along the uh, p dash line that is uh, q is equal to 0 line it actually uh, passes and subsequently what actually happens is that the sample is actually subjected to uh, you know the, uh, the sub subjected to shearing. So here during the shearing phase sigma 3 is equal to sigma 3 dash delta sigma 3 is equal to 0 and delta u is equal to 0 because no pore water pressure uh, uh, you know changes are actually allowed because the sample is not subjected to sample subjected to very slow shearing rate and sigma 1 dash is equal to sigma 3 dash plus uh, p by a. So with this uh, you know this also indicated as the effective shear stress path and the total stress path both are actually identical in this case. So for uh, 
for the for the case here stage 2 delta sigma 1 is equal to delta sigma 1 dash greater than 0 and delta sigma 3 is equal to delta so we are not actually changing the cell pressure so delta sigma 3 dash is equal to 0 and delta u is equal to 0 during the shear stage so delta p dash is equal to delta p uh, with uh, delta sigma 1 and remaining other things are 0 delta sigma 2 and delta sigma 3 is 0. So with that what will actually happen is that delta sigma 1 by 3 is the what we get. So this is actually delta sigma 1 delta sigma 1 by 3 and delta q is equal to delta sigma 1 minus delta, delta sigma 3. So this is equal to you know delta sigma 3 is equal to 0 what you have is that we have only delta sigma 1. So delta Q by delta P dash is equal to delta Q by delta P is equal to um, because of delta Q is equal to delta uh, sigma 1 and delta P dash is equal to delta sigma 1 by 3 uh, which is nothing but delta Q by delta P is equal to 3. So because of this reason uh, what you can see is that uh, delta, delta P is equal to delta sigma 1 by 3 or delta Q is equal to delta sigma 1. So delta Q by delta P is equal to uh, is in the, is given as 3 here that is the 3 vertical 1 horizontal. So cons next uh, you know we introduce ourselves to the consolidated undrained uh, triaxial test and wherein we said that uh, during consolidation the drainage is actually allowed but uh, during the shearing the you know the drainage valve is actually closed so, so shearing is done uh, to represent a particular case where the practical cases or examples have been discussed earlier. So this is for total and neutral and effective stress. So here uh, as we are actually not allowing the drainage in the shearing stage. So depending upon the stress history of the soil the pore water pressure changes occur accordingly. Suppose if you are having a normally consolidated or a loose sand sample their pore water pressure will be positive and in case we are having a, a you know a war consolidated soil or a very dense sand sample or dense or very dense sand sample the pore water pressure is actually negative. Uh, after initially positive and then subsequently changes to negative. So at the end of the consolidation the pore water pressure is actually 0. So then the effective uh, stress is sigma, sigma dash Vc is equal to sigma Vc, sigma dash Hc is equal to sigma Hc. Then during the axial stress increase the pore water pressure is uh, can be plus or minus uh, delta u it can be positive or it can be negative depending upon that the changes sigma dash v is equal to sigma vc plus delta sigma plus or minus delta uh, delta u is equal to sigma 1 dash and the sigma dash h is equal to sigma uh, hc plus or minus delta u uh, is equal to sigma 3 dash. So at the uh, at failure so you can see that uh, during the stress increase the drainage is actually is closed here. So because of that uh, you know the sample is not allowed to drain then because of that there is a changes in the pore water pressure. And uh, at uh, failure uh, again no, no drainage so with that you know again the failure uh, shear stresses are the pore water pressure changes are plus or minus delta uf. So sigma dash f is equal to sigma vc plus delta sigma f plus or minus delta uf is equal to sigma dash 1f and similarly in the horizontal direction sigma dash hf is equal to sigma hc plus or minus delta uf uh, is equal to sigma dash 3f. So the volume changes in the sample which is actually same as uh, you know the, the consolidated uh, undrained uh, triaxial test uh, which is similar and in this case uh, CU test the stress strain relationship during shear which is again uh, you know very similar to that but only thing is that here the pore water pressure aeration which actually takes place like this this is uh, positive and the pore water pressure is negative if you are having a dense sand and war consolidated clay. So in this case uh, when you have CU test uh, basically to determine the shear strength parameters here we can actually get uh, total strength parameters as well as uh, effective strength parameters and uh, for example uh, for the first case which is actually shown here the total strength parameters how to obtain uh, actually shown here and uh, we, we are having uh, a case where uh, uh, you know two confining pressures which are actually shown sigma 3a and sigma 3b and two more circles are shown and uh, when the envelope is actually uh, is uh, drawn this is the more column envelope for the total stresses and this is the more uh, more circle but depending upon the uh, pore water pressure uh, uh, you know depending upon the uh, you know variation of the pore water pressure we can actually get uh, the more circles accordingly positive or negative 
So with that uh, what will happen is that we will get the effective strength parameters that is the more, more Coulomb failure envelope shifts accordingly and uh, so this is uh, for the strength parameters for C and phi in case of uh, uh, in, so with the consolidated undrained actual test we actually we get both drained parameters as well as uh, undrained parameters. So the shear strength parameters in, term, in, some, in terms of total stresses are actually called as uh, uh, C consolidated undrained and phi Cu. Uh, in case of uh, shear strength parameters in, in, the, in terms of effective stresses are called as C dash and phi dash. So C dash is equal to C D and phi dash is equal to phi D. They are called the drained friction angle and drained cohesion. So the stress paths for the consolidated drain triaxial test. So we have seen consolidated drain triaxial test and in the case of consolidated drain triaxial test we notice that the stress paths for the you know effective stress path and total stress paths they both look alike. But in case of you know the um, consolidated undrained test where the shearing, shearing changes actually happens. So because of that uh, you know she, she, during the shearing the pore water pressure changes actually happens. So the effective stress path actually runs like this schematically which is shown here. So we have uh, isotropic uh, consolidation phase uh, delta u is equal to 0 and delta p dash is equal to delta p is equal to delta sigma 1 plus 2 delta sigma 1 by 3 which is nothing but delta sigma 1. So delta q is equal to delta sigma 1 and delta sigma 3 with delta sigma 3 is equal to 0 uh, and delta sigma 1 is equal to uh, 0 here delta q by delta p dash is equal to 0. So uh, with, with that what will actually happen is that delta q is equal to delta sigma 1 and uh, so uh, with, with this actually what will happen uh, with the delta q is equal to 0 and uh, delta p is equal to delta sigma 1 delta q by delta p dash is equal to delta q by delta p is equal to 0. So the in, in this case also during the consolidation phase the stress path actually runs like this. Then depending upon effective stress path means it runs like this, total stress path means it runs like this. So here in this case again delta p is equal to delta sigma 1 by 3 and delta q is equal to delta sigma 1. So delta q by delta p is equal to 3. So this actually runs like this. So this is for the shearing stages which are shown and this is for the uh, you know the for the uh, con initial consolidation phase which are actually shown. So for effective stress parameters and test, uh, for effective stress paths and total stress path the shearing phases is actually indicated here uh, delta sigma 1 greater than 0 wherein uh, delta sigma 3 is equal to 0. So delta sigma 1 dash is equal to delta sigma 1 minus delta u which is uh, uh, which, which is equal to 0 and delta sigma 3 dash is equal to minus delta u and delta p is equal to delta sigma 1 by 3 is equal to delta sigma 1. So delta p is equal to delta sigma 1 by 3 and delta q is equal to delta sigma 1. So delta q by delta p is equal to which is nothing but delta sigma 1 by 3 the delta sigma 1 by delta sigma 1 by 3 becomes 3 that is for total stress path but in this case uh, you know delta p dash is equal to delta p minus delta u which is nothing but delta sigma 1 by 3 minus u that is uh, you know what we have done is that delta u the per watt pressure change actually has been subtracted and delta q is equal to delta sigma 1 uh, where delta p delta q by delta p dash is equal to delta sigma 1 divided by delta sigma 1 by 3 minus delta u. So that is when you simplify that one because this is uh, you know uh, different so we have 3 divided by 1 minus 3 uh, to the ratio of delta u by delta sigma 1. So uh, we because of uh, this particular variation the effective stress path actually uh, runs like this. The now uh, as we said that we have another class of uh, you know the uh, triaxial test which is uh, a quick test which is actually called unconsolidated undrained uh, triaxial test. The purpose of the unconsolidated undrained triaxial test is to determine the undrained uh, shear strength of a soil of a saturated soil Pre predominantly if it is saturated uh, then we actually have uh, a, you know the undrained cohesion of a or undrained shear strength of a soil. So this is a quick test so neither during consolidation nor shearing stage excess pore water pressure is allowed to drain but there is a possibility that the pore water pressure develops but is not allowed to drain. 
So this indicates uh, you know these are uh, you know sometimes you actually get uh, for catastrophic loading or shuttle loading the shear strength parameters these shear parameters which are actually obtained from this uh, can be used for uh, the design. So this is basically for short term uh, considerations this can be applied. So different uh, stress states are conditions are actually shown here. So this is actually the sample as prepared the 0 the effective the total stresses on the sample on outside 0 the power pressure inside the sample is actually negative and then because of that you know sigma dash V is equal to positive UF will be there. So because of that negative power pressure the sample actually uh, stands vertical. So the effective stress here is that sigma dash uh, uh, V0 is equal to UF sigma dash H0 is equal to UF. So all round actually it maintains an effective stress of uh, equivalent to the negative pore pressure which is actually there in the soil and after application of the uh, you know hydrostatic uh, cell pressure then uh, you know what we have done is that we applied sigma C the total stresses on the sample changes to sigma C and sigma C here. Now the pore pressure he is nothing but uh, minus uh, uh, UF that is negative plus delta UC because we applied sigma C because of that there is an increase in uh, uh, soil sample pressure and 100 uh, percent uh, saturation means the water actually uh, attracts the load uh, and uh, uh, then you know sigma v, uh, sigma dash uh, V C is equal to uh, sigma C plus uh, uh, UF minus uh, UC. So this is another uh, you know set of this thing will come and the sigma dash HC is equal to U, uh, UF will be there. During the application of the actual load these are the stress states. Uh, which is nothing but uh, you know because of the shear there is an increase in the pore water pressure that gets added here. So these stress states actually different uh, stages actually the stages are given one is just application of the just placement of the sample before application of cell pressure then other one is actually after the application of uh, cell pressure and then during the application of the uh, shear load and then at failure. So the more circles are uh, you know for the 100 percent saturated clay uh, are indicated like this. So you can see that uh, this is independent of uh, the uh, you know whatever the cell pressure we apply for example uh, uh, you know this is a case where uh, you know 0 uh, cell pressure but when you actually have a cell pressure of say 50 kilo Pascals, 100 kilo Pascals and 200 kilo Pascals and if the soil is completely saturated and, uh, and unconsolidated underlying test is performed then you actually have a case where you know you get the horizontal failure envelope that is more column failure envelope the pi t is equal to 0 or pi u is equal to 0 and so the tau f is equal to shear strength is equal to C u and that is the, the more column failure envelope will be horizontal only. So, uh, so this indicates that you know the stress is actually independent of the that uh, stress. So whatever may be the uh, confining pressure you apply that much uh, you know deviator, gen, deviator load is generated such a way the diameter of the Mohr circle remains constant. Say for example when you are having a partially saturated clay and uh, initially uh, when you do unconsolidated undrained test using a uh, with partially saturated samples then actually you have you got uh, uh, you know uh, when degree of saturation is less than 100 percent. So with high, uh, poor, poor, uh, high cell pressures and when you have high confining pressures and because of the cavitation actually what happens is that the water is actually uh, the air which is within the sample is shunt shunted out with uh, water. So what will happen is that the 100 percent saturation is actually ensured. So and at very high confining pressures the more column failure envelope tend to become horizontal. So uh, then the sample actually becomes uh, you know 100 percent uh, saturated. So in that case again it maintains the uh, you know horizontal uh, plateau for the more column failure envelope. Otherwise initially for partially saturated samples actually you have got uh, curvilinear uh, uh, more column failure envelopes uh, can actually happen and uh, you know sometimes people mislead by using this uh, values for CU and phi U uh, as uh, strength parameters and undrained conditions. So the total stress paths uh, during uh, uh, unconsolidated undrained uh, triaxial tests are actually given here. So in this case because neither consolidation nor the shearing uh, the stage there is uh, a drainage. So what is actually happening is that uh, the stress path actually starts directly here this is a total stress path only and where you have uh, sigma 1 uh, this is the sigma 1 is equal to sigma 3 plus P by A and sigma 3 and delta U is not equal to 0. So initial phase initial stage is that delta sigma 1 is delta sigma 3 and delta U is uh, not equal to 0. So delta P is equal to delta sigma 1 delta Q is equal to 0. So delta Q by delta P is equal to 0 that is at this point 
at the shearing phase delta sigma 1 is greater than 0 and delta sigma 3 is equal to 0. So delta p is equal to delta sigma 1 by 3 delta q is equal to delta sigma 1. So with this again the inclination of this is delta sigma 1 delta sigma 1 by you know is again 3. So delta p is equal to delta sigma 1 by 3 delta q by delta p is equal to 3. So as we have been discussing that there is also unconfined compressive strength test this is one thing basically to determine the undrained shear strength of a saturated clay very quickly and in this case there is a special case of triaxial test which is called with sigma 3 is equal to 0 the cell pressure is actually 0. So in this particular slide where a sample actually loaded which is actually shown with sigma 1 that is the deviator load because sigma 3 is equal to 0 and the sample is actually not confined with you know the chamber pressure. So in this case basically this is a quick test where it can actually give undrained shear strength of a saturated sample sometimes this is also used for partially saturated soils basically to get the you know unconfined compressive strength of a sample and then there afterwards you can actually get the undrained cohesion the sample need not be completely you know you know saturated but truly speaking it should be it did to determine the undrained shear strength of a saturated clay quickly and the deviated load is actually increased rapidly until the soil sample fails pore water cannot drain from the soil so the sample is sheared off at, at the constant volume the sample is actually sheared at constant volume without any changes in the uh, you know uh, volumes and the without changes in the pore water pressure so the stress states are actually given here as the sample is prepared this is same as unconsolidated undrained uh, triaxial compression test and uh, this is uh, neutral, uh, neutral uh, stress or pore water pressure is minus uf so initial effective stress is that sigma sigma dash v0 is equal to uf similarly during the application of load you can see that there is a pore water pressure change occurs but uh, not allowed to drain so the test is actually done such a way that uh, no dissipation of pore water pressure takes place no volume under no volume change conditions so sigma dash f is equal sigma dash v is equal to uh, the delta u plus uh, uf that is the the uc that is during the uh, initial conditions so this is at uh, failure conditions so the uh, total stress path during uh, unconfined compression test again it actually resembles to this it actually passes through uh, you know the origin and uh, the in a delta as delta if delta u is measured it would have been uh, been negative since uh, uh, it, 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 it would be negative since sigma 3 is equal to 0 uh, delta sigma dash 3 is equal to sigma 3 minus delta u uh, is equal to minus delta u. So delta u must be negative because uh, as sigma dash sigma dash 3 cannot be negative so soils cannot actually sustain tension so sigma 3 must be positive. So the effective stress path is uh, unknown uh, in case of uh, unconfined compressive strength test because um, the pore water pressures or changes are normally not normally measured uh, they are norm, not, not measured normally if delta u is measured it would be negative since sigma 3 is equal to 0 and this delta u must be negative because uh, as sigma dash 3 cannot be negative the the soils cannot sustain the tension so the sigma dash 3 must be actually positive so here the delta u if it if at all you measure during unconfined compressive strength test the pore water pressure will be negative and the resultant more circles for the you know the unconfined compressive test are actually gone here so this is you know the uh, total stress circles because this starts from origin because uh, sigma 3 is equal to 0 and this is the uh, Mohr Coulomb failure envelope and this is the total stress uh, Mohr circle and if at all means the effective stress will be like this uh, the effective stress Mohr circle towards the right side because delta u is negative and if it is positive it comes this side. So uh, the effective stress circle uh, cannot be determined in the UC test this is only just indicated here and this is uh, you know the uh, as the phi u is equal to 0 the failure plane is actually only 45 plus phi by 2 it is only 45 degrees. So the failure plane is actually indicated here and this point where it actually intersects that is actually the horizontal uh, uh, envelope of a uh, more column more, more column value envelope. So the cu is actually shown here. So basically the results from the uc test are actually you can lead to the usage of uh, the estimate of the short term bearing capacity of a fine grained soils for foundations and basically for unconsolidated and drain test also we, we can use this logic 
and estimate the short term stability of the slopes or earthen dams and determine the stress strain characteristics under fast undrained land loading conditions. So if wanted to see the stress strain characteristics of a material under fast loading conditions and this is actually particular test is actually used. So this is the typical variation of sigma 1 with uc1 so you can see that the sample where the failure surface is actually is about you know is inclined like this and so you can see that this is sigma 1 and this is epsilon 1 and so the average of these two values which actually gives this is the deviated load sigma 1 by 2 gives the you know 136 by 2 which actually gives the undrained cohesion of a soil sample. So in this case this is a partially soil saturated soil which is actually having you can say silty clay type of sample where you know you can say that you know the undrained cohesion is about 65 kilo Pascals. So we also have some you know results which are actually typical results of consolidated undrained triaxial tests on silty sand samples are actually shown here. So you can see that the sample is actually tested with three different cell pressures 50 kilo Pascals and 100 kilo Pascals and 150 kilo Pascals. So this is actually 50 kilo Pascals cell pressure with it tested at sigma 1 minus sigma 3 and this is at 50 kilo Pascals, 100 kilo Pascals and 150 kilo Pascals and this is the excess pore water pressure measured because this is you know you know mostly you can actually see that the pore water pressure is positive because this is you know a close to normally consolidated sample state. So the sample at the end of the shear you can see that the sample actually has undergone major portion of bulging and you know then the subsequent shear failure actually happened this is actually within the membrane and once the membrane is actually taken out this is the case and then the stress paths actually are drawn here with the p is equal to sigma 1 plus 2 sigma 3 by 3 from the test data which is actually obtained. So these are the total stress paths that is for 50 kilo Pascal cell pressure 100 kilo Pascals and 150 kilo Pascals and then these are you know the stress paths for you know the effective stress for 50, 100 and 150. And these are the more circles for the silty sand sample which is actually tested. So the sample found to have the undrained parameters of the undrained parameters are C 7 kilo Pascals and 532 degrees and, and the drained parameters which is you know 2 kilo Pascals and, and 35 degrees. So this is the drained parameters. And this is for example of a consolidated undrained traction test and a fine sand having a maximum void ratio 0 0.778 and 0 0.54 to minimum void ratio and the void ratio after the consolidation stage is very dense uh, nature and uh, deviator stress versus axial strain is shown for uh, two different uh, cell pressures 50 and 100 kilo Pascals and this is the pore water pressure you can here you can see that because of the dense sand the pore water pressure variation is actually is uh, negative uh, then these are the typical uh, stress paths uh, in this particular slide you know we have seen we are seeing a status of sample particularly very dense sand sample after termination of consolidated rain rain triaxial test. So you can see that the sample bulging as well as you know the shearing actually which has taken place with pi by 4 plus 36 by 2 45 plus you know 45 plus 36 by 2 that is the angle of inclination of the failure plane about 63 degrees is the failure plane. And wherein you can see that you know the dense sand sample actually exhibits you know the failure plane which is a distinct failure plane. And when you actually have loose sand and normally consolidated soils we have you know predominantly bulging actually takes place. So in this particular lecture what we have done is that you know we try to understand about the different types of triaxial tests particularly unconsolidated and drained triaxial test and consolidated and drained and consolidated drain triaxial test and unconfined compression test is special case of so all these tests which actually we have done for as a for a compression case and we know that you know by maintaining different combinations of cell pressure and axial pressures we can also do extension test by using the triaxial compression test. But in this particular case mostly we have covered about the unconfined compression test or UU and CU and CD triaxial compression test pertinent details and then we also discussed about the 
the stress paths pertinent to that with the Q and P and P dash and then we also have discussed about how we can actually determine the drain parameters and undrained parameters depending upon the situation like for example undrained bearing capacity or you know when you are actually have you know short term stability of a slope then we can actually think of using undrained parameters undrained strength parameters when you wanted to have a long term stability of a slope or long term stability of an embankment then and long term bearing capacity then we actually have to use and uh, the effective strength parameters like drain parameter C dash and phi dash.